Well, Ice Free September is something that will happen very soon, um, in maybe in the next year or two, or certainly less than five years, because the trend has been downwards very rapidly, and then it, it, the, uh, it, the ice just kind of hovered around for the last few years. But it, it, it's, it's going down in every season of the year, so the September will disappear soon. And the months that will follow, um, because the, the trend is, is, is following close behind, will be uh, July, August and October. And they'll, they'll follow probably only within two or three years of that. So uh, I would say that in five to ten years' time, we might have a three to four month ice-free period in the summer, uh, rather like the Antarctic has. There, well, there's direct consequences and indirect ones. Uh, the direct consequences are concern the, the fact that the albedo of the planet will be going down. That's the amount of solar radiation that's reflected straight back into space. That goes down, which means that more energy is retained by the planet and uh, global warming is accelerated by that. So that's an immediate effect, which is quite a serious one. But there's a lot of indirect effects which follow from the loss of ice. Uh, and they include things like the uh, fact that the warmer air due to the disappearance of the ice moves over the Greenland ice sheet and causes that to melt more quickly. So you get an increase in the rate of global sea level rise. Uh, there's also the possibility that because the ice has retreated from the continental shelves around the Arctic, that this will cause the permafrost on the seabed there to melt because there's nothing to protect that water from warming and that releases a, a huge amount of methane that's lying in the sediments underneath. So there could well be a, a kind of methane burst that will come about because the ice has retreated from, from the Arctic Ocean. So there's a lot of consequences which are not direct and, but in, in fact affect the entire planet, not just the Arctic. Well, it's because um, fresh snow has an albedo that reflects about 80% of, of the radiation falling on it, not 80 to 90%. Whereas old, dirty snow that's about to melt in summer has an albedo of about 50%. So uh, it, it means that already uh, old snow is absorbing more radiation than young snow. So young snow, freshly fallen snow, however thin the layer, is very good for reflecting solar radiation. Well, at the moment, the, the difficulty is that um, a lot of the extra CO2 is absorbed by the ocean. And in that sense, it's absorbed by plants because it enters the ocean ecosystem and it's absorbed by plankton. Um, but uh, as the uh, ocean warms up, the, it can't hold as much CO2. So the, the amount of CO2 that's absorbed by the ocean has actually gone down. It was at about 41% of the, the oceanic of the CO2 released from man went into the ocean and, and it went down to 40.5%, which doesn't sound much of a decrease, but the amount of CO2 involved in that is massive. So it means that the ocean is beginning to fail in its task of absorbing CO2. And um, when it's absorbed, then it takes part in lots of biological reactions. But if it's not absorbed in the first place because the water's too warm for it to dissolve, then, then we're in trouble. Uh, well, yes, I, as I explained in my last answer, as, as the temperature of the surface water warms up, the, uh, the water can't uh, hold as much dissolved CO2, so the CO2 gases out. So as, again, global warming to the ocean reduces its capacity to absorb CO2.
Well, it's, it's an exceptional discovery that was made when it was first possible to sample the tiny air bubbles in ice cores. And it was found that during an ice age, the depths of the ice age, the CO2 content of the atmosphere goes down to about 180 parts per million. And then in the interglacial, when it's warmed up, it's up to 270. And uh, the amazing thing is that the, the last four ice ages, 180 and 270, were the two limits. One, the depths of an ice age it was 180, the interglacial was 270. Now, there's no reason to see, think, why should it reach those same two levels every time? But it does. So there's some kind of oscillation of of the ecosystem in on the planet, such that when the temperature warms up and the ice sheets disappear, um, the the, the um, effect mainly the effects of respiration and transpiration in plants bring you up to 270, and then in the middle of an ice age when a lot of the a lot of the high latitudes are covered with ice, it goes down to 180. It's just um, and, and a remarkable thing that you have those same two levels for every ice age, and uh, that's quite a... No, but nobody's worked out why that should be, but it's an interesting problem. Well, the, the, I haven't done the maths, but there's a couple of very distinguished climate scientists have published papers that say we're not going to have the next ice age. Uh, the global warming has given uh, uh, us enough of a kick to prevent ice from forming. We we ought to be gradually slipping towards a new ice age which would reach its peak or its depths in about 23,000 years. But, I mean, but we should already be heading towards it slowly, but we're not. I mean, we're warming very rapidly. So um, it looks as if unless we do something really drastic to save ourselves, uh, one of the things that will happen is we won't have another ice age.